I'm just coming back from the barn and I realized that I have not done a jewelry video in way too long. So let's do one. Hi everybody, it's Janine over at Slow Happy Vintage and it's about time we did another video. Huh? First off, I wanted to give a huge shout out to two people. One to Casey over at All is Vintage Market. She sent me a, a friend box of uh, things to help with my repair. Um, I had a bunch of stones I was looking for and she was happy to oblige helping me find those stones. So thank you, Casey. And then the other huge shout out is going to go to Connie. Connie, you know who you are. Um, Connie blessed me with a giant, and we're talking a giant box of vintage stones to help me with my repair work. I thank you so much. You have made my life so much easier. I already have plans to share a bunch of them. And um, gosh, I'm just so excited. Thank you, Connie, so, 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 so much. All right, for the video today, I'm very behind in getting videos done. So I have a lot to share with you. I've got like recent things like from today, as well as things from two weeks ago. So we're going to start with two weeks ago when I went to a special event held in a town um, a ways away from here. So let's cut over to that and I'll show you the haul after I show you some footage of where I went. Um, it's o dark 30 this morning. I got up super early and pardon me, it's too dark for my phone to even focus, but I'm not going to the swap meet today. I am going to the street fair, antique vintage street fair that happens twice a year. The sun is finally starting to come up, but I'm here in a little town called Cayucas, one of the little gems on the central coast here in California. Um, it's a ways away from our house, that's why I had to get up so early, but they, they do an annual antique vintage street fair and prices are usually a little high for me uh, especially for resale but if i find something that i really love and want to keep i might go ahead and buy something i do want to get to church this morning so i just have a little bit of time so come along with me and let's see what's here today have a nice spot here right Perfect by the ocean. Spot. I know. <laughs>
So I ended up buying a few things, not too much. I was trying to be good about it. They had a lot of really fun stuff, but yeah, a lot of this stuff was, <laughs> was priced pretty high. These are the things I bought at the vintage market. I didn't buy that much. Like I said, it was fairly expensive. Uh, out of this group, the average cost came to be about $5.80. And I'll try to tell you what I paid for each item when I showed to you. This little brooch here, absolutely adorable. I believe this one hails back to the early 1900s, 1920-ish, or maybe even a little bit earlier. It's all hand painted and look at the detail on this dress. The little tiny flowers, the just amazing. It's got gold edging, lovely pin back, and this was $6. I just thought that was so pretty. So each of these were $5 each. So I spent $15 on the three of these. This one right here is a Coral Craft. You can see the Coral Craft logo right there. And it's in pretty good shape. I believe this little baguette needs to be glued back in. So I'll take care of that. As you know, I don't mind finding, actually, I kind of prefer finding things that need a little bit of work because I can usually get them at a better price and fix them. And then this one is an Arthur Pepper, simple leaf design. It's got kind of a brushed gold tone, really lovely, also $5. And then this was a Trafari. Anytime I find Trafaris that are in really good shape for $5 or under, I usually pick them up. Uh, not the newer ones. We're, I, I want to do a whole Trafari video kind of talking about the levels of quality of Trafari, but I have not gotten to that yet, but soon, soon, soon. So then I went further and found this bracelet right here, which was also $5. This is unmarked, but it is very reminiscent of Goldette or um, Florenza or any of those kind of uh, Victorian revival companies of the mm, probably 70s, 80s. It's missing a couple little pieces that I have no problem fixing. None of the major stones like these stones are harder to find. So happily, none of those are missing. So I will do some repair on that one. I went to one booth. I was really liking this booth. So these, I bought three of these brooches for a total of $20. And this one is iris glass. I have a very small collection of iris glass happening. And I was thrilled to find this piece. If you don't know what iris glass is, it was developed in the 30s where they learned that when, when they were making the glass, if they injected different iron, iron oxides or different metal, metallic oxides into the glass when it's forming, they could make these beautiful little stripes. They also call it watermelon glass or rainbow glass. Um, but anyway, really pretty. I don't I believe this stone has been replaced because it is foil backed and the rest of them are not. So that's un most unfortunate, but it's still a lovely brooch. This pinwheel brooch is signed M and S and it's also gold filled. So that was a nice little, little brooch. And then the wonderful one that I found was this older Trafari complete with its original paper hang tag. These little guys are hard to find with the tag. So I was thrilled to find this one. Um, it's a very well constructed one. It's got the old crown logo and it was just $5. I cannot complain about that. This one should sell quite well and quite high with this tag on it. And then I found another sweetheart bracelet. So I know this guy, he buys a lot of big uh, storage lockers and he just likes to blow stuff out. So I didn't see this. I was looking at some other jewelry and a lady picked it up and I saw her looking at it. I'm like, Ooh, that would be nice. And I heard her talk to the man and say, how much do you want for this? And he said, how about 15? And she put it back. And so knowing that he just likes to blow things out, I picked it up later and I said, would you take five for this? And he said, well, how about seven? I'm like, seven's great. So got this for $7. Lovely little sweetheart 
bracelet. I think this one is dated. Yeah, this one is dated 1946. It has a little ins inscription 1946. I haven't looked closely to see if it says anything else, but it does have an, an initial in it. It says J and L on it. And if you uh, don't know about sweetheart bracelets, they were very common during the wars for soldiers who were going off to war to get these for their sweethearts. And as a token of remembrance, which is kind of sad to think because a lot of the soldiers didn't make it back. Beautiful little bracelets. I love these. Then the last thing I found at the vintage market was this set. This is another one of those sets. Oh, uh, with the box, it was $5 for this set and it is missing some things that I will be fixing. I'll do some more repair videos on fixing. The quality on this was very nice and when I looked it up this is an Alfred Philippe design for Trafari but these are not Trafari. This one it's not marked Trafari so they're not claiming to be Trafari and I'm sure that it is probably lesser quality than the actual Trafari ones but I asked the lady if this was the company Van Lu who made this because it looks like it belongs in here and she said, as far as she knew, that yes, it was the company. Looks like it had a matching necklace, but the necklace was not present. So anyway, I'm going to fix this up and put it on eBay and see how it does. It is really nicely constructed. It's a clamper. Well, it's a hinge. I guess you just call it a hinged bracelet. It's not a true clamper, but it does clamp. And it has a safety clasp and lots of pretty marquees. Anyway, there's that one. So that's all that I bought at the vintage market. But I also went to a garage sale that weekend and I spent a little bit more than I wanted to. Uh, I actually went to this garage sale twice because this lady that had the garage sale had a booth in an antique mall that I do go to and she was deciding she didn't want to sell vintage anymore so she had all kinds of really fun vintage stuff for sale. So the first time I went I bought a, a tray and this necklace from her. This necklace is rock crystal and or quartz and it is strung on a chain so you know it's an older higher quality piece. She was asking 36 for it in her booth but she sold it to me for i want to say i think it was 10 and it is just a beautiful necklace i'm beginning to recognize rock crystal when i see it which is a good thing because <laughs> for a while there i couldn't tell glass from anything else so it is just a gorgeous gorgeous necklace then i asked her if she had any other jewelry and she said well yeah come back tomorrow and i'll i'll bring more jewelry so I went back the next day and I ended up spending 110 this time, which is a little frightening to me, but I bought some very nice things. So let's take a look at what I found. Okay, so this was $110 that I spent. And first thing we have here is a enamel bracelet and necklace set, probably from the 40s take a good look at that. It's beautifully hand enameled, hand painted. And I bought, if you've watched my videos, you'll notice that I bought a set like this at a garage sale just a couple weeks ago and I only paid $8 for it. So she ended up charging me, I think $50 for this, but I love this one. So what I will probably do is sell the other one and keep this one for a while. That's what I tend to do. I, I tend to keep things until I either get tired of them or find something that I like better. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous set. Unless somebody really wants this, then contact me and see what you can do. The next thing I have is this beautiful little perfume necklace. I'm not sure of the age on this. It looks like a revival piece, but it is functioning. This little piece comes out and has a little dauber, so you could put per perfume in there but it is just a beautiful little lavalier style pendant necklace and or wide drop or whatever you want to call that it's got a screw or barrel clasp and once again it's got that guilloche enameling or guilloche treatment to the metal and then enameling over that really really lovely piece 
Then there is the West German, quintessential West German necklace and pendant. I believe this is just Lucite. It does say West Germany on the little uh, screw here. And this is a lighter weight piece. I'm not used to West German pieces being this light. I, I guess because I'm used to them being glass, not, not um, Lucite. But it's got the quintessential West German chain that we've seen so many times. And it's a lovely fall, fall colored piece. Very well made, but like I said, very light. And then lastly, and probably my favorite piece, is this Victorian, I guess you'd call this a slide bracelet. Um, it doesn't say gold filled, but I am most certain that this is gold filled, if not potentially gold, but my guess is probably gold filled. Uh, beautiful, beautiful condition. The initials on it are M-E-B and love that piece. I'll show you just a couple of things that I picked up. Because I have so many things to show you, I'm just going to go a little bit more. Um, this I actually found at our bins. It was on, I don't know if you've been to the bins or a Goodwill outlet and there's just clothing everywhere. And I pulled out a, a jacket and this was attached to the jacket. And I just took the pin off and took it up to the register with some other things that I bought. And I think he may have charged, I don't even think know if he charged me for it, but it was inconsequential however much I spent on this. It's got the swedge construction. If you don't know what swedge construction is, it's when these rivets, there's usually like a, well, it's all riveted construction. This one I thought was pretty, pretty nice. And at an antique store, no, this was at a um, thrift store downtown. I paid $4 for these. They're just cufflinks. I don't believe that they're marked, but I do have all kinds of horse jewelry. And anytime I see cute horse jewelry, I usually pick them up. This one was 50 cents. It is Trafari. Yes, older Trafari. And once again, when I see Trafari for, you know, $5 or less, I usually pick them up, especially when they're in such good condition. Okay, so we are going to sign off for now and I'm going to work on another video for you. So we might get some back to back videos. Don't worry, I'm just driving down our driveway. A um, little bit and see if this mic is going to work for me. So I don't know. We will just keep talking. What can I talk about? It's a lovely fall day. Um, got lots of jewelry to show you. <laughs> Drinking Pepsi. Had a chai latte. Dirty chai latte this morning. What else can I say? Testing. One, two, three, four.